Good afternoon to all of you who are watching us. This evening, we, today on the Feast of the Sacred Heart, um, so it's a perfect day to have this interview about Sister Claire. And today we're going to interview Sister Caroline Guarno. She's from Jacksonville, Florida, and she met Sister Claire there in the United States. So she's gonna tell us a little bit about her memories. So let's welcome Sister Caroline here tonight. Um, one second. Hello, Sister Caroline, welcome. Thank you for being here. Hi, Sister Kristen, thanks for having me. <laughs> okay, so um, to start, how old are you when where did you meet Sister Claire for the first time? Okay, um, I met Sister Claire for the first time when I was 13 years old. Um, I'm from Florida and we have a community of sisters there. So um, I met the sisters through a summer camp because we do summer camps for girls in the summer. Um, and I went, um, I was forced to go because I didn't know sisters. So the idea of going to summer camp with sisters intimidated me. So. Um, I didn't want to go, but my mom forced me to go, and so I went, and that's how I met Sister Clay. <laughs> did you enjoy the camp in the end? Or <laughs> I did, because, um, um, like I said, I didn't know sisters, so I had that um, typical mindset, you know, of the old nun who just prays, and, sh and they have a very boring life. But, um, like, seeing the sisters and Sister Claire, they totally broke that that mindset that I had of sisters. So I did end up enjoying the camp, of course. <laughs> okay, so how would you describe Sister Claire? Like if you have to describe her like in a few sentences, what would you say? How would you, you're from your memories from back then? Okay, um, I would say that she was um, goofy. That was like the, the first impression, uh, like a very goofy sister, just always making people laugh. Um, and then um, I would also describe her as authentic. Um, she, like everything that she said, she meant it. And she, like, she didn't say anything that she didn't mean. Like every, all of her words were like what she meant. Um, and then another characteristic, maybe um, attentive to like what God was asking her in each moment and then what we needed from her. In each month, like our spiritual needs. Mm -hmm. So, did you go? How many activities did you did you see Sister Claire during the year after that activity, or how many how many activities did you go to? Like, when was the next time you saw Sister Claire after that camp? Mm -hmm. um, I did do the activities that the sisters organized during, throughout the year. There were fewer. Um, maybe like once once in a while, maybe once a month, they would organize a get together or something like that. And I don't have like um, specific memories from those encounters. I did go to a total of three summer camps where Sister Claire was, um, um, a trip to the March for Life in Washington, DC, um, and pilgrimage to Ireland in 2010, and the World Youth Day in, in Madrid, Spain in 2011. Okay, so you, um, well, we'll get to all of those because that's a famous pilgrimage to Ireland that's in the book um, for those of you who have read it. So we'll get to each, each of those parts. Um, as we talk now, like if anyone who's watching has any questions, they can go ahead and ask the questions. I'm gonna show some pictures from the activities um, real fast, which I think it'd be great maybe if we, as we look at them, mm -hmm. um, Sister Caroline, if you wanna like say what it's from and like I can point with the mouse to show like what, um, where you are, because that's that's a harder part to recognize. Because now you have to have it on, so it makes it a bit more difficult. But um, but I think that people will be able to figure it out. So what's this picture? Okay, this is the summer camp um, that we did in Georgia in two thousand and nine. Um, okay. So this is like looks like lunch, or I don't know. <laughs> um, I am on the right side the fifth head down the line and Sister Claire's head is like right above my head. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's go on to another one. I love this picture. <laughs> <laughs> this is me playing the ukulele um, in Valencia. This was right after, either before or after one of our um, ceremonies. It was the entrance into the novitiate. And so there were, we were a big group of people 
And um, it was like one of those moments where um, someone sings a song or someone tells their their test their testimony about how they've been how, like what their impression of the ceremony that day. And um, so I had my little song that I played on the ukulele. <laughs> you can see Sister Claire looking up at you and she's sitting down obviously, so that's why she's looking up, but it's good. Um, is this from the same camp, the previous picture, the earlier yes. one? The first this is the same Georgia camp in 2009. Mm -hmm. So Sister Claire's there on the left. You can see her down there. Um, let me see if I can see down there on the left, yeah. And then you're over here on the right. Mm -hmm. nope. There we go, people. Um, let's see. This, this picture, <laughs> March for Life to Washington, D.C. in 2010. And Sister Claire's there on the bottom, and I'm on the left. <laughs> it looks like I'm cold or something, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is the March for Life then. Yep, that's me. And this is Sister Claire's over here. This is, this, is this is Spain during the pilgrimage we did before World Youth Day. I, there's she's standing, she's standing, and I'm like above her in the back. <laughs> I've heard lots of funny stories about sister from other sisters about Sister Claire translating during World Youth Day, and the funny things she would say. She translated almost constantly. I think like a lot for a lot of the because it was an activity that was in Spanish um, for the majority. So like all the English speakers would listen to like headphones and hear the translation. So Sister Claire, do you, do you remember any of the funny things she would say? Um, I remember, I think this this um, comes out in the book, but um, when we were walking through the, like we we're walking the street and she told us to just start like, um, like jumping on one leg or start meowing randomly. And so like all of a sudden a bunch of people just out at the same time just started to do something strange like that. It was, it was really funny. I remember too that um, because she was like almost constantly talking or, or yeah, like telling stories or making us laugh. That the the Spanish girls they like asked us to listen to the to our to, our, to the translation, the translation, like the jokes that Sister Claire was saying. I'm like, no, it's for us. We understand Spanish. <laughs> okay, so do you what what do you remember? It's like general messages that she would talk to you, young people, about. Like what 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 message you say like has most remained in your heart that most helped you from all the different activities and things that she would share with you? What I remember most is um, how she condemned superficial superficiality. You know, she didn't want us to be superficial. Um, she made us realize how much more important our soul was than our body. You know, um, like girls like love um, fixing their hair, wearing makeup. I remember once, um, I think there was a group of girls like talking about superficial things and Sister Claire um, overheard that someone, one of the girls said that how, like how much time she spent in front of the mirror straightening her hair. And I remember her saying, um, like, you can spend that much time fixing your hair, but you can't do a holy hour in the in the parish. And I remember I remember that like was like whoa because <laughs> I was a superficial I was superficial too. So that was like I mean even though she didn't say it to me, but like it it got to my heart. Um, I remember another fun fun, fun story um, during a a car trip a long car trip at one of the rest stops. Um, she said, okay, ladies, like she always calls ladies, ladies, let's see um, who can go into the bathroom and not look in the mirror. That was like our, our challenge, like go use the restroom at the gas station and not look in the mirror. And I remember some of the girls were not able to, to not look at themselves. It was like, I was like, wow. Like, I don't know, like little, they seem like maybe they're like stupid things, but um, she like made us realize how superficial we were and like, to not want to be superficial and to be authentic. But do you think it, she thought it was because she thought looking in the mirror was wrong or why do you think she like suggested that? <laughs> I think because she cared more about our our soul. No, because I remember she'd also tell us like, um, our body one day is gonna be buried and it's gonna like rot away, but our soul is gonna live forever. So like, that's much more important. Like she didn't, um, despise like she didn't say like oh you should never wear makeup or never dress up she didn't say those things but um she just made us realize 
realized that control was a lot more important that we shouldn't because we don't we would we didn't take care of ourselves. <laughs> mm -hmm. I remember also you telling me once about um, like how she talked to you about mus the music you listen to on mm -hmm. one camp at one camp. Yeah. So at the the summer the Georgia summer camp, the one that we saw two photos from. Um, one afternoon we watched a documentary on music. It was it was about like rock music and like the damage it does like, physically and um, like dangers that rock music could have on people. And um, Sister Claire and other sisters they um, they talked to us like like because. Um, cause like music for youth is like a very important part of their life. Um, and if you're not careful, you know, you could like, I don't know, it can, it can hurt you. So, um, I don't remember like key ideas maybe that she told us, but I remember like after that, watching that video and what they talked to us about, um, when I got home, I got rid of a ton of music. I had my iPod full of music and I remember deleting like more than a thousand songs because I realized that it was not helping me. It was like doing me harm, um, but it was a grace. Yeah, and another thing about uh, music, um, I was in my um, church band, worship band. And I remember once Sister Claire came to for a holy hour and the sisters were gonna lead the holy hour and like talk and give us ideas for the the time for prayer afterwards and um because i was in the band playing i remember her telling us to not in that moment but another time um that it was important for us to mean what we were singing you know because in a worship band you're like singing praising god um i want to give you my life like all those beautiful ideas um but she she asked us no um and do you realize what you're singing do you know what you're saying and do you mean it? Um, so that was, that helped me a lot too, to like you know that aspect too of being authentic. No, not just sing pretty songs just to look good in front of other people, but to really mean um, what you're doing <laughs> with music too. Do you remember any like funny memories or like games that you would play with her on the trips or things like that that would make people laugh to see how Sister Claire was also like very normal. She wasn't just like talking to you about, um, I don't know, holy things all day, but also like a normal. Yeah, um, most, it's funny. Most of my memories of Sister Claire are from the car rides from the trips we would do. Um, one of my favorite memories is um, from the March for Life. We were coming home from DC. It was a 10 hour drive from DC to Jacksonville. Um, and on the way home, it was dark, and um, you know the, the sister who was driving was tired. I mean, every everybody was tired, but um, especially the sister who was driving. <laughs> and um, Sister Claire um, said we're going to start playing this game called Drop That Beat. Um, and basically, her or someone else in the car had to start beatboxing. And then um, each person had to spontaneously um, add like a word or a phrase that was that went along with the topic. Like she would say, "Okay, now we're gonna do church objects." So okay, so then we'll start beatboxing. You know, uh, there goes the beat. And then um, one person say, "Okay, confessional, uh, white candle, uh, <laughs> tabernacle." You know, it was like really. And then we would like just, um, and she would conduct us and like, okay, crescendo, we'd all, like raise the volume and then she'd go like this and then we'd just be quiet. And then we'd just start laughing, like <laughs> cracking up. Cause it's like something so silly, but um, I don't know. When we were in the car with Sister Claire, uh, you were always doing something over there, singing, um, playing games, um, interviews, uh, listening to Daniel Rose. Daniel Rose is one of her <laughs> favorite um, English Christian, <laughs> artists that we listen to all the time when we went on car trips. Um, yeah. Ooh. What was it? You told once a story about how you had to like go into the gas station, like imitate a different accent or something. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we were um, pulling up into the gas station. Um, and she's like, okay, why don't you guys, well, I don't, I don't know how she like 
made us want to do these like ridiculous things. I don't, I don't like what she had, but it was like, okay, yeah, it was like a great idea. Uh, this was the idea. Um, we're gonna go in and ask the guy in the gas station where the bathroom is with an Irish accent. I don't remember what part from what part of Ireland, but she said, I don't know. She's like, okay, so you can, we practice with her before we got out of the car. I have to go to the bathroom. So, okay. Okay. Have to go to the bathroom. So, so we all, all the girls walk in, <laughs> go to the guy in the gas station. We're like, we have to go to the bathroom. So, and he just like looked at us like, oh. <laughs> just like Claire was stayed in the car. I don't think, I think she came out with us, but just like, I don't know. It's like there's really silly things. <laughs> okay. So turning to, um, in 2010, you went on the pilgrimage to Ireland, which was her first time back in Ireland in, in eight years, maybe um, nine years. It had been a while. Um, what are you first? Like, what would you say is your favorite memory from the trip? And then if you remember anything specific about Sister Claire or something she said during that pilgrimage. And I'm going to put on some pictures while okay. you talk about it. Yeah. Mm, okay. I remember, um, I don't know, favorite memory? I'm trying to think. I don't know if this is a favorite memory. I, it was like a, um, a memory, I don't know how to say it. Um, it's like that I haven't forgotten. <laughs> um, but she, one day when we were there, she talked to us very, um, almost not harshly, but um, she spoke very seriously about modesty to us one of those days. Um, and yeah, one of the things she told us was um, come on, that um, we could be leading other souls to sin through our way of dressing. Um, you know that we should, before we walk out of the house, um, look at ourselves in the mirror to like, make sure that what we were wearing wasn't going to um, be an occasion of sin for other people. And to ask ourselves the question, how many souls am I gonna send to hell today? By the way, because of the way I'm just saying. Um, that's like one of, I don't, that's the memory from Ireland. It's funny, cause like it has nothing to do with Ireland, but <laughs> that's like the memory I have from Ireland. Um, I also remember that she had to translate for us um, from Irish English to American English. It's funny because um, when I met Sister Claire, she talked like an American person. And it's funny because um, she would tell it once in a while, like she would um, say, you know, I'm because I'm from Ireland. I have an Irish accent. Like I'm talking with an American accent on purpose so that you guys can understand me. And we didn't believe her because she did it so well. And so um, when she saw like we, nobody believed her, she would start talking with her Irish accent. And then we just like looked at her like, oh my gosh, it's for real. Like sure, we don't understand her Irish, her Irish accent. So on this Ireland trip too, I remember she had to translate Irish English to American English for us so that we could understand um, what the people in Ireland were, were saying. So at this point in for the pilgrimage, to Ireland, how old were you at that time? I was 16 years old. Mm -hmm. You're 16. Okay, and so when did you discover your vocation to be a servant sister? And was Sister Claire still in Jacksonville at that point or had she already gone back to Spain? Um, I discovered my vocation the, the Christmas following Ireland. So Sister okay. Claire was not in Jacksonville anymore. Um, yeah, I don't know, what else? Do you wanna tell us like briefly how you discovered your vocation? <laughs> okay. um, so, well, when I was in Ireland, I entered the, the home of the mother youth because um, our religious family is not just servant sisters, we have servant brothers also, and also um, youth and lay members. So um, on the Ireland pilgrimage, I felt called to enter the home of the mother youth. And from that moment, I started taking um, daily mass more seriously, um, having a spiritual director, um, praying, dedicating time to prayer. And so um, so that was a very big help to start discerning, I think. And so um, 
that Christmas, I realized that um, God was calling me in some way. He wanted me to be his gift on Christmas Day. And, um, but it was kind of like, I didn't understand it like um, very clearly as the vocation. I just knew that I had to be God's. I didn't really know what it meant. Um, but the following summer is when um, we had the, the World Youth Day pilgrimage, 2011 in Madrid, Spain. And um, I didn't arrive directly to Madrid. We went first to our mother house in the north of Spain. And um, after a few days, it was very, very clear that um, God was asking me to enter there and as soon as possible. And Sister Claire was around. Like I didn't um, talk to her regularly or anything, um, but she was there. Um, and so um, the day I told our, I asked our founder if I could enter, um, I needed a translator because I didn't speak Spanish. And the chosen translator was Sister Claire. So, um, so when um, when I asked to when I when I told uh, father and mother that I understood that God was asking me to be a servant sister, Sister Claire was the one who like translated my English words into Spanish, um, and it was a really special moment too. I I don't know if it was a grace for her too, but I just remember um, she teared up a little bit, <laughs> which surprised me. I didn't know. I, I think she knew that I had a vocation, but I don't know. I don't know, it was um, special. <laughs> yeah, because I actually remember her mentioning once, um, she was talking to Father Raphael, our founder, and he's like, there's there's no more vocations from the States. He's like, we haven't had a vocation from the States in a while. She's like, no, there are some girls there. And she mentioned, she's like, Caroline, Caroline, I, I think she has a vocation. Um, but that would have been before that. So I think it must have been really special for her to see, like, you know, she had seen you grow up, seen you grow, you know, closer to our Lord, you know, tried to help you so much. And then like to see how our Lord had called you. Um, I don't know. I suppose that's why she turned out to see like the whole process. And, this, you know, and it's beautiful always to hear how you know, like, our Lord chooses a soul and that she's now going to be your sister. I don't know that. Um, it's really special. Um, do you have any memories? Well, we already talked about World Youth Day a little bit, but um, how she would translate and make you laugh. So she would have been there because you entered then at World Youth Day, right? As a candidate. Mm -hmm. um, and so she would have been there as well for your entrance as a candidate. You know, I was look when I was looking for pictures for the interview today, I was, there was a picture from your entrance um, and there's a sister hugging you, but it's from the back. So you don't, I, we can't tell which sister it is. Yeah, it <laughs> but it, it could be Sister Claire, we don't know. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I should have added that picture, but I didn't. Anyways, it could be Sister Claire. Okay, so now, um, when, because that this would have been 2011, you went back to the States right after that, and Sister Claire in 2012 um, flew to Ecuador. Do you remember the last time you saw her? Would have been the summer of 2012 when you visited? You don't remember. I do remember. I do remember. Yeah. Okay. Um, I remember her with a sprained ankle. Is that what you I missed that last part. What did you say? Was it the same? Was that the same when she, when she like sprained her ankle? Like sprained her ankle. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Summer two thousand. Yes, that would have yes, been. That would have been. I guess her last summer in Spain. She sprained her ankle, mm -hmm. um, which is really funny. The whole situation because she would joke about it and like hop around with her crutch and make everyone laugh. But um, yeah. so, um, I don't know. As a last question what I don't know after her death do you feel that she's still like helping you and that she's alive or um I don't know because having known her and having like her helped you in like your vocation and like your growth as a teenager I suppose like she still has a special love for you in a way and takes care of you Yeah, because I didn't, I didn't um, see, Sister, see Sister Claire again after, like, once I became a sister. So, like, all of my memories and all of, um, like, her helps for me were from, like, before being, uh, before being consecrated to God. Um, so, yeah, I do ask her to help me to live our life as servant sisters, um, not like exactly like she did because I'm not Sister Claire. I have to live my vocation, um, but uh, like an older sister, you know. 
to to help me and like counsel me kind of like she did when when I was um, younger. <laughs> um, and also um, when we work with the youth too, uh, sometimes I think about like, well, how would Sister Claire do this activity or um, what would she act like with these, with this group of um, teenagers? You know, I don't know, um, just like ask her for advice. <laughs> um, yeah, I remember too, when when the days when the right after the earthquake um when we didn't know if she was if she was still alive or if she had died um i remember like remembering her her laughter no it wasn't it's was like her her laughter came to my mind i was like well i don't know what this means but <laughs> no it's it's nice to, like like feel her close and that's like maybe one of the most um special like feeling her close to me. Um, but yeah, I do feel like she she is helping me, um, even if I'm not like constantly talking to her. Um, I'm kind of embarrassed to say too that I realize that there are a lot of people who have a lot more love for Sister Claire than I do. <laughs> like I being her, her sister, no. Um, but um, yeah, <laughs> I would like to have more um, to like talk to her more often, it would be good because uh, I know that she she does help me. I just have to ask for it. <laughs> so we do have some have questions. Some questions. Here, I'm, can you turn off your microphone while I talk, Sister? I don't know why it's doing this, but yeah, hopefully that will work. Okay, so we have some questions. Um, so I'll let you try to answer them first. Also, like with what you know from the book, but if if you don't know the answer, then I can try to help you because there's things that you know you, um, we've heard from other sisters from um learning because sometimes you know you, you don't like sister claire doesn't go around telling everybody about her inner difficulties but um so maddie lou asked what does what did sister claire do when she was feeling tired like do you remember sister claire being tired um did you ever see her tired or did you or did, was it just like normal like the sisters are always like alive and running around and doing things and you didn't notice that she was tired which would be amazing because in ireland i mean you can see some of the videos now and you look at her in the videos and you can tell like that at the end of for example, her day in dairy, like she was exhausted. I mean, it was a lot of emotions, lots of things going on, but then she's still like talking to the girls and doing things. So I think it was like really totally generous, but I don't know, what would you say to that question? Um, I honestly don't remember ever seeing her like show that she was tired. I mean, personally, maybe I was a little bit um, oblivious. I don't know. Um, but like after reading the book or reading stories about maybe moments when she was tired um now like remembering moments like when she would like stand up and start doing something silly uh, to make everybody laugh like maybe that was what she was doing when she was tired like i didn't realize that because you, know, you could you can't see that but um yeah i would this is what that's what i think i i never saw her tired personally <laughs> Then someone else asked, how did Sister Claire deal with desolation? Um, and I think that's kind of tied to um, what you do when she was tired because desolation is a moment in like where in your spiritual life, you're in prayer, you don't feel the Lord's presence in a sensible way or you don't feel like praying, you know, it's very difficult. It's go and I'd say that what Sister Claire did was that she would just like go to the chapel. She would always, always, stick to her um schedule of prayer like not just because you don't feel like at a certain day like oh it doesn't matter like anyways our lord doesn't say it. no like you you stick to like a, your schedule like you stick to your prayer life and she go and like she and even if like you don't you can't because there's moments where maybe you don't even know what to say to the lord but she just like kneel down and say like here and she writes that in one of her um letters to father Raphael, our founder she writes like there's days when like nothing comes out, but I just kneel down and say like, Lord, let my, the position of my body, like here kneeling before you be a sign of my love for you. Um, and I think that's like a beautiful demonstration of what we can do in desolation. Like there's moments when, when like you, you really just like your mind isn't there, like there's nothing, but you can just kneel down and, and offer at least that prayer to the Lord. Um, everyone can look for their own little tips, but first like never, never stop praying. And second, like find ways to show our Lord that, you love them. Um, okay, so there's 
Um, Maria asks, how did she help you the most to determine your vocation? Um, what would you say? Do you have anything um, that you remember that helped you um, from what Sister Claire said or did in your vocation? Um, directly, no. But I, when I thought about the sisters and like what an, a truly authentic sister, like the mad, the like the image that came to mind was Sister Claire. I don't know. Um, like I said before, her authenticity, her um, she wasn't afraid to tell to the, the truth and say things that maybe seemed um, like harsh. Um, yeah, she didn't care about like being the, the the fun sister that everybody loved, but in the end, that's what happened anyway. Like she. Yeah, like her, her, just she was so real, um, and I think indirectly that did help me with my vocation. <laughs> no, that makes sense because if you like, after, it was the, just a few months after she had left Jacksonville that like you felt the Lord's call. So it's obvious that like what um, the sisters you knew included Sister Claire, and that was like one of um, and the way I think that we're faithful to our vocation does affect like if we're not faithful like our Lord will not send us vocation. So I think like it's a sign, um, yeah, it's a beautiful sign to see like that because she did live her vo vocation faithfully then among the young people that that she tried to bring closer to him like our Lord did, did call someone. So that's beautiful to see. Um, okay, and so then this is the last general question from Kitty Bits who asked if anyone has contacted us with miracles that can be attributed to Sister Claire and if there's a novena prayer. Okay, so yes, um, we have, we received lots of emails. There's been two emails recently from Northern Ireland, um, or actually they were letters, but someone who was healed from leukemia and then someone who was also healed um, from another type of tumor. I'm not, I don't remember the exact details. Um, we're still waiting for the medical information. So they have to be studied. Um, those are the, just the two most recent ones. And there's also lots of smaller things. You know, the church obviously will have to decide if they're real miracles or not or what's going on. Um, but the, but all of these emails, even if they're just small things, like someone wrote the other day, said like, I had, I had a huge migraine and I asked sister Claire for help because I knew that she knew you know what it was to go through a migraine and it just immediately disappeared. I mean, that's just something that you'll never be able to prove that medically, but someone who has a migraine, like who go, who suffers migraines knows what that is to have like a really bad migraine and then just ask for help and it disappears. I mean, that's not something that normally happens. So, I mean. Um, so Sister Claire does seem to be answering prayers, um, or that our Lord permits her to, to intercede. Um, so we'll see where this goes. Um, we have taken steps to opening the cause. We're waiting for a response now from Rome. So it's just um, a matter of waiting now. But yes, if you have any, have received any, even just a small thing from Sister Claire, please do write us and tell us because that does help and all we have to present all this. So please do let us know. Um, it's beautiful to see how like her, because of, she was so generous here on earth, our Lord is permitting her to really help. And people say it's like, she's really fast at responding. So um, I think she, she, yeah, she's enjoying, um, you know how Sister St. Therese said that she would send roses down on earth. Well, I don't know if Sister Claire would refer to it as roses, but I think it has to be fun to be up there in heaven and, and help other people down here and you know, let our Lord have our, you know, our Lord let you continue doing good things from up there and the spiritual graces are actually the most important because I mean you can ask for physical grace but sometimes like that physical suffering is actually something that's going to help your soul more than if our Lord removed it um but the spiritual graces of like conversion of of people who like leave behind a life of lukewarmness and like realize that because I think that's the main message that Sister Claire has to offer is like we have to be um we have to be saints we have to give our Lord everything it's not just about it but it's not we don't have to be weird and like all of a sudden like close ourselves in a house and no, like we can continue being normal people, but not being superficial. Like what sister, Cla sister Caroline was telling us early about not being so worried about our exterior appearance, you know, like, like look for little things that we can do so that we're focused more on the good of our soul, the good of other souls. Um, yeah. There's just so many things. I think like those um, asking sister Claire for help with those types of things, like, like say, Oh Lord, like I, I really struggle with vanity. Like how can I not, be so vain and like focus more on my soul and not let people think about me. Like ask sister Claire, like help me with that. Cause she, that's something that she herself overcame. And I think that's why she talked to young people so much about that and encouraged them to fight it. So fight, you know, to overcome that. 
So, um, yeah, so we've reached the end of our time for tonight, but um, thank you for watching, following. Um, Sister, Sister Caroline, I don't know if you have a last word or something you want to say to finish um, or just to, um, yeah. We're saying next time we, we're going to have to ask Sister Caroline to, Caroline to bring the guitar and play some songs since he, she has Sister Claire's gift for music. Um, so, but there's, the other sisters weren't there to sing with her today, but next time we'll have to have her on to sing some songs. Um, that's another thing so Sister Claire would always sing. So that's another great thing. So anyways, thank you all for watching and, and be saints. That's the message um, I think Sister Claire leaves us with. Thank you.